Hello, how are we? Good, thank you. Diana, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing great, loving loot. Uh, let us start with you, Joel. Um, clearly giving back to the community is not Nicholas's uh, mm -hmm. first mission in life. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about how he takes Tamale's uh, new life goals? Yeah, I think, um, you know, at the start of the show, uh, Nicholas is, serves as sort of a devil on Molly's shoulder a little bit. You know, he would much rather be, you know, doing drugs with her in Belize and buying castles online uh, than trying to save the world. But I think as he gets pulled in um, to this world, it's he goes on sort of a parallel journey as Molly, you know, um, in a sort of uh, kicking and screaming uh, sort of way. You know, he falls into this friendship with Arthur and, and Howard. And, and that, I think, like, really changes the way he views the world because he's not used to having friends that actually care about him. You know, I think like he's used to very surface, you know, what, you know, quid pro quo friendships um, that are very competitive and to finally be around people that actually care about him and, and you know, want him to do well in this world. I think it, it really changes his outlook on life. Absolutely. Speaking of friendships, uh, Ron Howard just seems to be living his best life, loving everyone, but he has a special affinity uh, for Nicholas throughout the season. Can you talk about that growing bond and how he reacts to him? Yeah, well, I think when we come and meet Howard, he's pretty bored. He's living his life with not many challenges, not many people that he relates to. And, and I think when he sees Nicholas, he sees someone that he can possibly bond with, someone who's cool as him, someone who's as handsome as him. They can go to the <laughs> gym together. He just sees that as a, as a future. And he doesn't understand why Nicholas is apprehensive at first. Um, because I think the character of Howard, similar to myself, is very heart open and just is that bond for everyone and it's kind of like that grounded person that grounds Molly, bringing mm. her back from material world into the world of her family and the world of charity and letting you know that like even, no matter how far as you stray, your family will still be there for you. Oh, I love that. Thank uh, you. <laughs> Nat, Arthur and Molly have a lot more in common than one would expect. Uh, can you talk about that growing bond and where you see it going? Yes. Uh, I think, you know, there are a lot of similarities to where Molly and Arthur are in their lives. Obviously, you know, both recently divorced and trying to sort of fig figure out what this kind of second half of their life is going to be like, or this next chapter, I should say. Um, and I think they, there's this connection that sort of gradually kind of, um, is percolating throughout the season. And obviously it's, it's challenging because it's a work relationship and then it's, you know, but there is obvious, you know, feelings for each other, but what, how much can you, you know, move forward with that and how much do you sort of have restraint with it? Um, but, you know, hopefully uh, I would love for that to continue to kind of develop and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, like the root of all good drama, there's going to be obstacles and tension along the way. So <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> we shall see. Now, uh, not all of us have $87 billion dollars to give back to the community. But I am sure we all have causes near and dear to our hearts. Can you each say what is one that you are particularly fond of? Um, yeah, I think uh, right now in LA, I've been really involved in uh, the unhoused um, uh, community and their struggle here. And I think it's, you know, it's an epidemic across our country. And I think it's especially bad here in LA right now. And so that's definitely a cause that I think we address in the show that, and that was really a big draw for me, honestly, was coming to this show and having, seeing sort of these real life issues be depicted in a comedy was really, really remarkable to me. Absolutely. Ron? I have a couple. I mean, my son was diagnosed with autism at an early age, and that's been a big part of my life, being an advocate and ad life for autism awareness. Um, and then locally, I'm a big fan and, and I enjoy working with this program called School on Wheels, which provides after school programs in a safe place for unhoused children or people or children who are at the risk of being unhoused, find them a safe place to um, go after school and to learn and to do their homework and provide a way out of their, their current circumstances through education and something that I've been part of for years and I enjoy bringing up. So thank you for asking. 
that's wonderful. Well, I must run away now. Thank you guys so much. The show is so much fun. And so are you guys. <laughs> <laughs>